Hi everyone. So today we're going to do like a grouped analysis type stuff. We're going to do some proportional type graphs. Um, we'll get to touch on pie graphs and when and when not to use them, but we're going to do some like heat maps, other stuff like that. So I'm going to start actually with this data right here. This is rate your stress in different ways. That's what this faux data came from. Um, extra, uh, financial, other stuff, stress, academic. So let's go down here. The way that I could count how many in this column, you know, how many people rated it to, for example, I could sort the column and manually count it. That's a little much. What you can do instead is say count if equals count if is a great Excel tool for saying, all right, if this two value right here is up in there somewhere, count those. How many are there? Bam. I'm going to end up, I have to transpose this data, which means like take it like this, but actually copy it value. So you leave the equation in there. So now I just got values. You can right click to transpose like that. Transpose just kind of shifts it X to Y. That's going to help us in Prism in a sec here. So next thing I did was I got the sum of each one and turned it. And so I got the sum of each thing, even though I know it's the same sum, it's 162 in each case. I like being thorough and said, how many ones out of that sum exist? What's the percent there? Got it. So I think I've shown you in a different video, uh, you can do something like that, like conditional formatting is a very good way in Excel to make like a fun, like you can visualize it. That's not what we want to graph though. So let's go ahead and take these data to the next level. Let's go into here. I've got us in a grouped format for Excel. So last time, or sorry for Prism, the last time we left this, we were doing just bar graphs. Let's take a look. Oh no, no, I can't. I need to get rid of these little spaces. Sorry, we're going to brute force this out of the way right here. One, four, Five, done, hooray. All right, next I also would just rate the uh, level right here on the Likert scale, which is one out of five. There we go. All right, so if I wanted to, I could make five separate pie graphs for each of these, right? And each little slice. Um, so for sleepiness, I would be like, all right, so like 5% said sleep is, uh, they're not very sleepy. 22% said that they are, they're like a little bit, but not really, three, 45. And then 5% of the class was like, I'm extremely sleepy all the time. Same thing, I could do one for transportation stress, academic stress, any of these like Likert scales. Now, what I'm about to show you is a stacked bar graph. It's a very clean way to do a lot of proportions at once. Let's take a look. There we go. Everything's out of 100 since I've made everything out of a percent. I would probably just click this down, um, get us down to 100 right there. Now it looks like it wants me to give it, yeah, which you can do so you don't get cut off like that is just give it like a nice little 101 right there or something. Um, dang it, I'm being perfectionist, but here we go. Come on, give me like 20% for that. Nice. All right. So now everything's also aligned nicely, as you can tell. So one, I could say, so most of these are rating stress. So I can say like stressor maybe. Um, let's take a look here. So remember a one and I'm going to say, I want to actually want to change all these data sets. Let's get the border a little sharper at one fourth like that. See how that's going to crisp things up. It's nice. Border colors stay black. We're all good. Um, I don't think symbols are going to add anything, are they? No, nah, that's just like the raw amounts that you're stacking. You probably don't need to do that. Okay. So I'd say for colors, like remember one is like kind of nice in this case. Um, well, look, and you can do all kinds of fun stuff. Sorry. Now I'm like messing around. Yeah, you can do like plots and stuff. Dang. All right, sorry, I gotta, I gotta focus up. Oh no, see what I've done. I've added like totals here. Give me back to, give me back. There we go. All right, getting carried away. So, if a value of one is like the low stress, uh, you know, you could do something easy like green. Then the next one is like, eh, it's like not really a problem, like powder blue. All right, yellow, like things are kind of becoming a problem. Oh no, orange, like a little stressy, and then red getting angry. Yeah, I kind of, I don't like how it looks actually. Yeah. But you guys are free to choose your own color. Um, I'm not the artist that we could be, but, um, you know, this is always a good little liker, like, you know, happy, pretty happy, neutral to not as good, but these are great little graphs. And this shows to me now, like a big, good stack of everything. Um, I think there's good ways, like in the annotations, uh, you can probably do for each little set. Yeah, so if they fit inside, um, you can have the actual value in each one. Notice that if it's too small, though, the value will never fit in there. 
Um, you can do some formatting though and get that rolling if you want it to. But as you can see, when it's a really small amount, it'll kind of cross over on itself. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's a good little visual, super nice. If I was trying this in um, the proportion set, so parts of a whole, and this is gonna be your typical pie graph in this case, we're probably gonna see, so let's do academic stress. Um, and in this case, we're not actually going to see, we can only do one at a time too, if you notice that. So right here, we're going to say academic. All right, there we go. And we're just going to, oh, no, we're not going to do all these. Give me just a, give me a bit here. It's going to auto-complete everything. There we go. I think I stacked it right. Oh, no. Yeah, you got to, sorry, I got to invert it or uh, transpose this. There we go. Right click to paste transpose. Perfect. Now we can say here's my academic stress and in percentages. Again, I can make the colors go here. Five's a lot. Um, I would say a good for this data set, something like pass versus fail, green versus red. Two colors is great. And people love and recognize pie graphs. It just gets a little, gets a little much after a while. Um being kind of Things get a little little crazy. I don't know. See, things are going to get a little nasty here versus a proportional stack like this. It's going to look pretty good because you see all the data at once and it's still pretty like user friendly. Um, things like that. Let's actually get these all together up in here. Yeah, I want kind of want them just right up next to each other like that. Look at that. It's pretty good. Sweet. So as you can tell, um, nothing wrong with a pie graph. You could probably got two things going and you can make these super colorful. You can make pieces explode like here. Yeah, we can do all kinds of stuff. Look at that. I can make that piece like come out and explode like that. It's pretty fun. Um, they're never, they're not horrible. I shouldn't have been so harsh, but at the end of the day, it can get a little, get a little busy. Um, a fun way on Prism. I mean, well, it does have the stacks just for you like that. And uh, you can always do bubbles. I do really like this little population graph right here. It's always actually been one of my favorites. Um, if you do have data in here that you're like, you know, like this is going to look good. Like if you are strictly doing a population, for example, um, you know, I wouldn't say like no to the thing. I don't think it would be like the worst thing on the planet. I, w I would say like choose your, choose your battles when you decide to use something like this because it's still going to get pretty... Still pretty busy, um, but it's kind of my favorite of the busies. Sorry, I just really like those. Okay, so go back here. Given that, I kind of want to jump into another, probably the best way potentially to show data like this. Now, the dimensions in this data show the amount based on size of each of each uh, factor in this case. I want to take that and I want to change that size factor into color. The best way to do that is going to be a heat map in this case. And there's my favorite right there. Viridius color scale. See that? That nice like yellow, all that stuff. It's crazy. So most people, as you can tell, right away from this thing, um, they're not super, or they are in this case, super not stressed because this A right here, you, on, the, on Prism, you got to change this back to the row title. Show row labels title and then show column labels title. Here, let's get that going. Oh, goodness. That's the actual title. I mean, the labels here, sorry. You got to go here and instead of A, B, C, do column titles. There you go. There's our ratings, the one through fives. So as you can tell, most people in this case, since that's a high value, they don't really care about transportation stress, but it's higher. Um, you can also tell the thing with a heat map though, is that if you keep things in proportion, see how this value is so high, it kind of dominates the color for everybody else. That's another sort of issue with the heat map is that it's going to... It, the values can sort of run away from you pretty quickly. That said, you can technically go in and adjust the color scale and say, all right, I like Viridius. Um, that's a good color scale for me. But I want to say the largest value, I don't want it to go all the way to 50. And maybe you just want it to go to like, I don't know, 45, right? Those will start to go sort of white right here, or I can make them, I could say, I'm going to make that black that's outside the range. I don't know. It doesn't really add much. And it kind of like is a stinker when you take those out. So honestly, keeping things in line, it's not too bad. And this isn't, this isn't horrible. Um, so not too bad. Plus 
You got some fun little, you got some fun gradients you can run with. Infernus, magma, plasma. I always say these to my dogs whenever I'm, whenever I'm doing these. Okay, that's a little much. Don't ever do that. Um, but if you want to make your own double gradient, for example, like I know that like a really fun one, like black can be in the middle, um, this cool teal or teal right here versus, um, like some yellow can be pretty neat sometimes. Like people like patterns like that sometimes. It's kind of neat. Um, here, what else? You can pair this with a purple, and that's really people like those a lot. Yeah. Sweet. Anyway, um, I don't need these actually. Or actually, I do. I want that back because I would say like rating for Likert rating. Perfect. So what do we get done? Heat maps, um, proportions, things like that. Grouped is like it's the weird one because they're it, it can go all the way back to just straight up bar graphs, as you can tell right here. But it, grouped has some of the more like aesthetic, cool stuff that we have. Um, a couple of you did little dot bar graphs on the on the assignment. That was pretty neat. Um, three away, we're not really there. And like I said, you know, nothing wrong with a good old bar graph like that. It's actually not not the worst thing on the planet. But if you can if you can work your way into some great stacks like that, I mean, it's a it's a cool little figure. So in that case, I'm gonna try and think, I don't know if I have, I'm trying to think if I want to experiment with anything else in this case. When you're in Prism, you can technically take data and be like, you know what, give me, give me a new format. Be careful with this. So for example, I have grouped stuff right now. If I go into column, it's going to assume that I, those are replicates now, because remember column is stacking and saying, here's, you know, trial one, two, three, four, five, and those values. Um, Pretty sure, yeah, I remember like nested is kind of crazy. It's like its own specific sort of test. Um, looks like, yeah, it's not really gonna read the data like super well. Yeah, see, I think they're replicates, so that's not the case. So to stay in the nice safety of group should be fine. Um, I mean, you could technically do a fun little dot plot like this. I, I that technically it could work, I think, here. I think you'd actually have to transpose these data to make them kind of work. But now I'm like super duper curious. All right. All right, low stress. And we're going to say, uh, yeah, I don't know if I would, I don't know, I don't know how much I would pull on this one. So I'm going to change all data sets. I'm going to go to the nice, I'm going to go to a nice square, give it a little, give them some little good little squares there. And then let's go to low stress. Yeah, we'll see how this looks. And that's the best part of Prism is like give it give it a few you know, few um few spins and you can always sort of find like, eh, you know, I kind of like that aesthetic, things like this. What I'm making now actually probably would be best for anything across time is my is my guess in this case. That would actually be something to to pursue. So, um Based on the story you're trying to tell here, you could actually, I mean, this this actually doesn't do a terrible job um, showing like the percentages for each stressor amongst the population. It's not horrible. Um, so wouldn't be the worst thing on the planet, but kind of depends, like I said, the story you want to tell. Perfect. So given all that, thank you again for watching. Hopefully it was fun to learn a couple, couple new things about um, prism and grouped graphs and heat maps and all that good stuff.